A year ago, I purchased the DJI RC controller and have loved using it ever since switching from the RCN1. I've really enjoyed not having to use my phone connected to the N1 controller. However, recently I started getting involved in drone mapping. And to do this, you need to be able to fly autonomous waypoint and map missions. And as we all know, the Air 2S is not capable of doing this without third-party apps. Unfortunately, the DJI RC doesn't allow for the installation of third-party apps. So that would mean I'd be back using the N1 with my phone. Not wanting to do this, I decided to purchase the DJI RC Pro. Here's a short video of my experience using the RC Pro to run these autonomous missions and the mapping app and processing software I chose to use. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's Joe from Ghost1917. So, although this is not going to be a comparison video, I am going to hit on a couple of the key differences between the RC and the RC Pro and why I chose to switch to the RC Pro and how I'm using it to fly these waypoint and mapping missions. I'll also go into the app I'm using to fly the missions as well as the processing software I'm using to create the maps. Let's start with the RC Pro controller and the key functions that drew me to it. First, the RC Pro has a bright 1000 nit screen, which doesn't dim during use unless you want it to. As I've shown in a prior video, the 700 nit brightness of the RC controller performs well in daylight, but you can see the 1000 nit screen is noticeably brighter. Secondly, like the RC, the RC Pro uses OcuSync 3, unlike the small controller, which uses O2. And as you know, the Air 2S uses O3. And last, but certainly not least, is the RC Pro's ability to run third-party apps. And the primary reason I decided to switch. The third-party mission planning app I'm using is DroneLink. DroneLink is one of several different mission planning apps available. But after trying the different apps, DroneLink seems to have the most to offer. It's compatible with the Air 2S and I was able to make a one-time purchase with the ability to upgrade to a subscription when I need to. But at this point, the subscription of DroneLink I've chosen to use offers me the functionality I need to teach myself the basics of drone mapping without incurring a monthly fee. It's a fairly robust mission planning app and has a pretty good interface. I'll place a link to the DroneLink website in the description below. I've run several different types of autonomous missions using the DroneLink app on my RC Pro, and it has performed flawlessly. I've completed map missions, orbit missions, and waypoint missions. The map mission is used to create orthomosaic maps. The orbit and waypoint missions allow you to run the exact same flight path to create time-lapse images and videos. So, now that you've collected your data using your Air 2S and your Mission Planner, you need an application to process the images and footage you've captured during your missions. Again, there are many choices out there, but probably none that offer what WebODM does at the awesome price of free. With one caveat, you'll need to have a little bit of computer knowledge to install WebODM for free. Otherwise, it's a one-time fee of $99 for a Mac install and $64 for a Windows install. Again, I'll place a link in the description below for WebODM, and if enough people are interested, I'll do a future video on the free install method. Using WebODM, you can create crystal clear orthomosaics, digital, surface, and terrain models, 3D models, and perform stockpile measurements. So, what can you do with these wonderful maps once you've created them? Well, the primary sector utilizing these maps is the construction industry. The Orthomosaic map can be used for the site manager to get an updated overview of the job site. Just like using Google Earth, only your map will have much better resolution and will be up to date. 
The digital terrain model can be used to determine the topography of the job site, allowing for more accurate placement of structures and drainage. Once construction begins, the 3D model will give the interested parties an updated rendering of the construction progress. In addition to using DroneLink on my RC Pro, I was also able to install other third-party apps that I use when flying, such as Aloft Air Control for checking the area I'm flying in and performing lance requests, and Air Data UAV, which I use to check all my flights. Side note, Air Data UAV can be linked to your DroneLink account, so all your flights will be synced in the same way that the DJI Fly app does. I find it very convenient to have these apps on the controller as opposed to having to pull out my iPhone. Well, I hope this explains why I switched to the RC Pro. And on a side note, I was able to snag the RC Pro for roughly half the cost of new by finding it on a popular auction site, which made my decision to switch that much easier. As always, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments section below if you've been getting involved in drone mapping and what hardware and software you're using. And while you're down there, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.